Hello and welcome to Wilcom's video short series for Embroidery Studio E4.0. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to uh, center the design uh, on the page. I'm going to explain uh, the page relative to the design and how to make sure that your design starts and stops in the center. And I'm also going to show you how to uh, do a, a quick clone or to copy and uh, duplicate and uh, mirror uh, an image on the screen. Here we have a design that was just brought in. Basically, uh, when I pasted uh, the design here, it just uh, stopped here on the page. Now, uh, if I uh, choose to, um, I can create the file uh, from here and just digitize it from here. And um, the question is, uh, where? what is the center of the design and what is the center of the page? Um, these are two different items, okay? Uh, you see here in the center of my screen, uh, you see a uh, red crosshair in a red square. This is the center of the page uh, here. And if I select the design here, uh, this here is actually the center of the design. Okay, they don't have to be on the same location. Um, however, if you wish to go in and center the design on the page as well, uh, let me navigate here. I'm going to drag my positioning tools here on the bottom and so I'm just gonna select this on the screen here if I want to center this uh, design on the page as well I'm gonna navigate down in the position X and Y I'll do the X first and I'm gonna type 0 for the position and I'll click here and select the position Y and I'll press 0 here as well and the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press my enter key and that's gonna center the design uh, on the page as well. Okay, when you're working with your designs, uh, you want to make sure that uh, when you're uh, digitizing, and if you're bringing files in, you want to make sure that uh, the white crosshair is in the center here of the design, uh, which represents actually the center of the hoop. Okay, um, if you want to make sure if the um, white crosshair is not in the center of the design and it's uh, off uh, somewhere where the last stitch is. That's what usually happens, and you'll see that white crosshair wherever that last stitch is in the design. I'm going to navigate up top here to show you how to make sure that it's stopping and starting in the center. And I'm going to choose my design drop menu. I'm going to scroll down and choose auto start and end. And here you just want to make sure that the apply auto start and end here is selected. You want to make sure that the maintain automatically here is selected as well. Uh, you want to make sure this is uh, selected here, your auto start and end. And you want to make sure that the dot here is in the center of what we call, this is a imaginary hoop here. So making sure that it's in the center uh, to make sure that the design starts and stops in the center here. Um, if your setup is not uh, like this one that you see here, you want to make sure first that you save it, left click, and you, you get a pop up on your screen uh, letting you know that this will affect all new designs. Uh, that you'll be working with not the old ones here so I'm going to click OK to verify and uh, that has been saved to my uh, normal template now and that's the template that when I bring in my software it's the first one that comes up on my screen I'm just going to click OK here now uh, just really quick I'm going to just show you how to go in and uh, and, and digitize this now um, if you want to lock the design on the screen I'm going to navigate over to my color object list and you have a little uh, thumbtack here uh, currently it's pointed to the left that means that it's in auto hide mode uh, if I click this to where it's pointed down um, it is actually now locked on my page actually or my screen and that I can see what's going on uh, also you want to make sure also if you're digitizing uh, you're going to click on that image and you want to lock it on the screen so it doesn't move because if you're digitizing something and you accidentally uh, click the mouse button and it goes whoop like this uh, that's that can get a bit annoying um, and so you want to make sure that the image is locked on the screen um, and you can do that by uh, pressing K as in Kevin on the keyboard or you can navigate and right click here and you can also uh, scroll down and click your uh, lock tab which also tells you that the K key here is the shortcut key and now uh, it's staying on the screen and it won't move okay and I'm just gonna just quickly go in uh, and the uh, what I'm trying to do here, I'm, I'm going to digitize this and I'm going to just flip it over. And I'm just going to show you how uh, that works here. And we're going to use these tools here. And these tools are called your transform tools. 
okay if you don't see them on your screen uh, if you don't see them up top here remember you can always right click here on your uh, voided space and whatever is checked here on this uh, page here on this menu is actually shown on the screen and you just want to make sure that it has a check by it to make sure that it is uh, uh, on your screen here and this is what it looks like and here's that transform tool as I verify that it is selected okay I'll click back on the screen and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and choose the uh, I'll choose the uh, column B stitch here to do this with and as you know the column B stitch will allow you to do one side first as I right click here right click you could always uh, zoom in to your item also to make sure that you can see what's going on with it once I finish side A I'll press enter and I'll go to side B here and I'm gonna press enter okay so there's my um, object here I want to make sure also that the object stitch length here is not too wide so I'm gonna press T to take off the true view here now once you see this uh, here um, you see these uh, dotted lines here what these represent is uh, that now your machine is not stitching in normal stitch mode like you are here and I'm gonna press D to hide the image um, here your machine is stitching in regular stitch speed here once you see these dotted lines now your machine has started doing jump stitches uh, because these stitches are uh, very long uh, I'm gonna measure those stitches to see how long they are I'm gonna press M is in Mary and I'm gonna measure this uh, giving two reference points here one and two and this stitch is again uh, 11.43 and the maximum stitch length on the machine I think is 12.0 so this is a very long stitch so anything uh, that's that's just at or under 10 millimeters uh, is is a long stitch uh, at, and uh, so whenever you see these dotted lines these do represent jump stitches and it's when your machine goes from a choo 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 to go ka choo ka choo ka choo ka choo ka choo and that's what your machine is doing here and that's not good for your machine to do that excessively okay um, you have a choice in this matter um, to fix this one um, I can go in and I can change this the stitch type here to a tatami um, and I can easily do that just by selecting the object on the screen navigating up top here to tatami and just changing the fill type here and that's yeah, what this is what it looks like currently okay now I'm gonna press D to bring my image back and now in order for me to uh, duplicate this and flip it over I'm just gonna select it you can uh, press control plus the D key on the keyboard to and watch my color object list here you should see another object added there like this and from up top here using my um, my tools here I can go in and I can merge this uh, mirror this uh, horizontally by clicking here and then I can select the mirror vertically and it's gonna move this here I can just click and drag this over space it up a little bit like this and so this is how you go in and you uh, duplicate uh, and uh, you uh, do a, um, a mirror horizontally and vertically inside the software and again you also have an option also that if you don't want to use the tatami stitch you can select uh, and you can choose satin and you can uh, right click on that and go into your properties uh, under your satin here and your fills and you can choose auto split so the auto split stitch is available also uh, that you can actually also go in and change the uh, width of that maximum width that it starts to do the um, the split you can also choose that also and it's just another option for you um, that you have that you can choose to use that inside the program okay and uh, as always want to make sure that you have the proper amount of underlay in here and um, make sure that if you uh, using the um, fabric assistant as I select here and go to design you have auto fabric that um, if you want to turn this on and choose the fabric type that you're working with um, in your program and click OK okay and it will apply the auto fabric um, to the existing objects okay as I click OK and so that uh, is going to give me the proper amount of underlay as I press T for these and I'm going to press uh, D also now 
Remember also that when you use a, a, a tatami stitch here, like you see here, you want to make sure the underlay should never go in the same direction, like you see here. So you have an option here to go into the properties, which I'm going to right click, go into my object properties, and I'm going to click on underlay. And for my underlay setting here, I can go in and I can change the, uh, the angle of the underlay stitch. I can adjust that. Uh, and I can also go in and uh, change that if I'm going to do a uh, double zigzag. I can do that with it to change the underlay type for that. Um, or I also have an option to go in and do a, uh, a double uh, tatami stitch here for it also. So those are just options that you have uh, based on the types of fabric that you're going to be working with uh, for this. And um, so I'll have that here and I'll also definitely have on a, a secondary underlay stitch as a uh, edge run here. Okay, and that's just some more options that you have available that you can use uh, in reference as far as going in and completing this. I'm going to press O and D to bring back the graphic. And so I'm going to press T also to bring back the true view. So this is, again, um, how you would go in and complete these different uh, functions inside the program. Thank you very much. And as always, we ask you to join us at www.willcomamerica.com. Thank you.